Hi guys, we're here to teach how to make the paper mache. I was supposed to go live, but having a three and a half year old makes almost anything impossible to do. So um, we are gonna start off with our most important ingredient, which is all purpose flour. We do want some water. So I'm gonna get some water here in a second. We do want a, like a measuring cup, we're measuring spoons. We want a bowl, a decent sized bowl, but if you're not gonna start off with a ton of paste, then this size bowl is pretty good. And then you're gonna want some salt. And I will explain everything here in a second. Um, so the ratio for uh, the paper mache recipe is about two, um, two, what do you call it? Two servings of flour versus three servings of water. So the ratio is two to three um, for flour and water. So depending on how much you guys want to do, I kind of just free um, pour and then uh, depending on the consistency that I'm looking for, you want kind of like a soupy, um, chowdery kind of uh, thickness of consistency with this. You don't want it too watery, um, but it kind of depends on what you're working on. Um, so I'll show you guys a project that I started on. Actually, I created it over 10 years ago. It was a dollhouse made out of diaper boxes. So I'll show you guys that. I am recreating that or, re or renovating it, I guess is what you can say. All right, so first things first, we're gonna pour. So you can measure this out or you can free pour it. So let's see. Let's do one cup of flour. So then we need two cups of water. Let's mix that one and see what it looks like. Yeah, so you're definitely gonna want more flour. This is really gonna be watery. But you wanna make sure you get all the clumps and lumps out. Oh, and I should have noted, um, it's best to use either room temperature water or warmer water. Um, you don't want it to be cold. Mine's kind of on the cooler side. I kind of didn't think about that, but it's not a big deal, but you don't want it to be cold, cold. You want it to be more room temperature water. And now I'm gonna add more flour. Or, um, yeah, 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 more. You, yeah, and you know what? I think I said that backwards in the beginning. You want that backwards. You want to, um, <clears throat> two to one ratio or three to two if you if you do the three to two you're going to want to do three cups flour um two cups of water so we're going to add more flour it's been a while since i've made this but it's pretty easy um you don't have to really measure it as long as you get the right consistency <clears throat> and then if you're not going to use all of this paste in one day, um, you can put some saran wrap over it and leave it in the fridge for a few days and it should be good. Um, the thing with the salt, if you add, so now it's getting really thick. So now I might need to add more water. But the salt is going to help um, keep bacteria from growing. It's going to keep it from getting moldy. So I'm gonna just add some salt in there. So you can kind of feel it. It's actually pretty good. Um, so there's another recipe where you can add Elmer's glue, like the white Elmer's glue, and it's just gonna give it like a thicker, stickier bond. Um, but I don't really normally use Elmer's glue. Uh, I just stick to flour, water, and salt. And you're just gonna mix until you feel it. So you don't want it to be runny. This actually might be the perfect 
consistency. If anything, I add like a splash of water, but this is actually kind of what you want. You want it to be like porridgey. Um, and so the next step is we're gonna get our newspaper. So now that our paste is ready to go, we're gonna get some newspaper. So what I started doing, I used to cut strips with scissors, but actually I've learned that it's better to rip your paper instead of cutting it. So you don't want a straight edge, actually. You want it to be uh, not straight. So, well, it comes off straight, but what I mean is you don't want like a blunt edge. So I'm just gonna rip some strips. These are gonna be our dipping strips, not like chicken strips. These are our So I'm gonna open up this folded one and just rip that in half. So it's always nice to have a bunch of this on hand because once you start paper macheing, your hands are gonna get really messy and it's gonna be a pain having to like wash your hands off a bunch to get more paper. So I just like to get a bunch of paper. What? No, cause you're being too loud. So once you guys get enough paper, um, then you're gonna wanna decide, or if you haven't already, decide what you're gonna make for paper mache. So there's tons of different things that you can make for paper mache. You can make masks, you can make uh, decorations for holidays, you can make paper uh, or pencil holders, you can make so many different things. I've made, I don't even know, so many different things. I've made all of the things I've listed and more. Yes, buddy, I've even made um, <clears throat> paper doll or uh, paper mache doll shoes. So you're just gonna want a bunch of these on hand. Um, so I will show you guys the dollhouse that I was working on and um, what I'm still working on and that I need to finish up so that you guys can see the final product. So this is a big paper mache project. If I can fit it in here. Okay, let me show you. Okay, so here is the little dollhouse that I made out of paper mache. I made this for my niece uh, about 11 years ago out of diaper boxes. So the base of it is uh, two different diaper box sizes. This is a smaller one and a bigger one. And then all the rest are just extra pieces of cardboard. So I even have a chimney on there. We have a balcony. This is all made out of cardboard. And then the paper mache that I showed you guys how to use, you're just gonna dip strips so you guys i'll show you that here in a second child keeps destroying it so yeah i was in the middle of fixing it and then like one of them ripped off one of these little flower planters and um, i used to have shutters on here i took the shutters off i added flower plants um i completely changed the color of the dollhouse and then i changed the balcony is completely different um, I added the checker flooring. My kids always ask me, why is there a hole right here? Well, I figured that it was kind of awkward, like putting the dolls like this and then having to like turn the corner. So I added an extra thing. So yeah, thank you guys. Okay, so earlier I was explaining the recipe for paper mache and I did make a mistake. Um, I did say more water than flour. It's gonna be the opposite um, because the more water you put, the more watery it's going to be. So you're gonna wanna put more flour um, because you want it to be a little bit thick, not too thick. Um, so I made this earlier, you guys saw that video. I'm gonna mix this up a little bit. It is cold, I just took it out of the refrigerator, um, which is okay. And then I just made this quick little box out of cardboard and masking tape. The reason why I suggest masking tape is because it's the most like paper. Um, if you use duct tape or any other um, shiny tape, it's not as sticky. Um, you want like paper on paper, if that makes sense. You don't want paper on like glossy tape. It won't stick as good. So let me get something to stir this really quick. Okay, 
So we're gonna stir it up. So see how it's kind of got that gooey, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's, it's kind of hard to see at this angle. I mean, let me move this just a little bit. So it's pasty, okay? So we already have our pre-torn newspaper strips. So what we're gonna do is, instead of dipping it in there, I like to pinch some paste. And, oh, this might be a little too thick. Okay, so we're gonna put some on there in very lightly you don't want to pinch too hard because if you pinch too hard with your fingers you're easily going to tear the paper so you want to be very gentle you want to just smooth some paste on there so see so the paper is wet you might see just like a little bit of paste on there but it is wet and so what i like to do is i'll start like you can wrap it around the side and then you're just gonna wanna smooth it out. And I'm gonna take another strip and same thing, we're gonna goop it on there. So the key point about paper mache is you're gonna do one layer at a time. And then you're gonna let it sit and dry like either overnight or if it's the daytime and we're in Arizona so it's really hot outside all I would have to do during the, di the daytime is just let it sit for maybe like 20, 30 minutes and it'll be dry. But if it's like indoors and it's damp, um, it will take a couple of hours for it to dry. So you just want to make sure you cover all of your first layer. So you don't wanna see any of that cardboard box. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover the next piece of newspaper. You don't want it to be like dripping, like so heavy that it's tearing. If it tears, you can just try another piece. So I'm gonna smooth it across. You wanna try to make no like bumps, um, no bubbles as much as possible. Okay, so I have that side. I'm gonna grab another strip. And you're just gonna keep doing this until you cover the entire outside of your project. And then you're gonna stop. And you're gonna let it dry completely. And then you'll go over it another time. Uh, one time I made a paper mache uh, pinata for a friend of mine, her son's birthday. She wanted a giant like football um, and it was like a football that had like arms and legs, you know, it had character to it. And it was my first pinata that I ever made and I made it completely out of paper mache. And let me tell you, her dad had to use a crowbar, a crowbar to get into that thing. So now I make my pinatas out of, um, I don't make them out of paper mache, I make them out of poster board paper and I just tape it together and then I use tissue paper to make the um, outline, the outlayer of the paper, you know, the shredded paper. So like for my son's birthday, I did a Minecraft um, creeper and it was completely out of poster board and I used different uh, shades of green tissue paper and yeah it I mean it took me about a day and a half to work on it not a full day I mean a couple of hours one day and a couple of hours another day so maybe 10 hours or so but that's just me being it could have been much smaller. It was a very large pinata. So, you live and you learn. But yeah, so you're going to go around the whole...
side of your project with one layer of paper mache and you want it to completely dry. You don't want to keep doing layer over layer over layer. It's just like with paint. Um, it'll take way too long to dry. And then if you try to work on it later and it's not dry, it just, it's mushy and it's not good. So you wanna make sure each layer is dry before you work on the next layer. So just keep that in mind. But maybe paper mache, I mean, it's time consuming, but if you're watching a movie and you're just, you know, trucking along, it's, you can get a lot done without even knowing it. Oh, this is a double. This is one of those pieces of newspaper that got cut at the fold. So it is double wide, like a double wide trailer. Some of those double wide trailers are really nice. Okay, where are we gonna put this sucker? Hmm. Well, I already got that side. So yeah, guys, paper mache is really fun. You can make so many different graphs, like Halloween, pumpkins, masks, decorations. I made my dad pencil holders growing up. There's so many different things that you guys can make. Um, I'm thinking about making some Halloween decor um, coming up because it is sadly just around the corner. But yeah, you want to make sure you get on the inside also of your projects. And once this is dry, I'll go over it a couple more times. Again, allowing it to dry in between the layers. And then it'll be a nice hard project and ready to paint. And you can paint it however you want, which is the next fun part. It's probably the funnest part is decorating but it's also nice to see once your paper mache is dry and ready for the painting, that's also, that's also a um, very nice feeling just to see your project nice and dry and paper mache -ed. I know, I'm weird. Okay, well, you guys come up with whatever idea you guys want and I am so excited to see it. I am gonna let this dry so again you don't want to do too many layers you want to like if you did all the outside I'm gonna maybe let it go upside down and dry again smooth out anything that you need to I'm gonna do one little strip right here on the side and then, yeah, you're gonna just let it dry overnight for a few hours, put it outside in the sun. Right now it's nighttime, so I'm gonna let it sit overnight. And then in the morning, I can probably get a lot more done just by letting it sit outside and drying in between layers. Um, and again, I'm working on a paper or a paper mache dollhouse. I've been working on it for a while. I've been renovating it, uh, refurbishing it, whatever you wanna say. And um, so I'm excited to share that video. It's in the editing process. All right, you guys, I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna put some saran wrap or foil over my paper mache recipe and stick it in the fridge so I can work on it again tomorrow. And I will see you guys later. Thank you guys for watching so much. And I'm sorry for the mixed ratio um, ingredient in the beginning of the video. Again, you want more flour than water. So again, more flour than water, two to one ratio or three to two ratio flour more than water. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.